enormous budget. Well, to discuss it all, I'm joined now by the Director General of the Institute of Economic Affairs, Mark Littlewood, and Fran, Fran Boyd, the, the Director, Director of, of Positive, positive Money. Money. Very good evening to you both. Fran Boyd, um, Positive Money, was it a positive budget? Excuse me. Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, it was a dishonest budget. Right. You know, the Chancellor um, said they'd end austerity. Theresa May outlined it in her conference speech, and it was nothing of the sort. And furthermore, you know, the, the Chancellor was dishonest in his statement around austerity being necessary a necessity rather than an ideology when clearly you know economists around the world including the IMF have said it's bad economics I think it's really important to put this budget into context you know ten years ago we had the financial crash and rather than reforming the finance sector seeing our economy was unbalanced and broken we had the coalition coming in in 2010 and do undertaking severe austerity decimating our public services you know massive cuts to welfare 14 billion of the most vulnerable eight years on we're seeing you know, horrendous statistics, we've got homelessness crisis, life expectancy is actually declining now in the UK for the first time in 100 years, infant mortality is increasing, and so they decided to ease austerity. Well, he's not going to do actually... all that in one budget, is he, though? But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll follow that up in terms of a uh, step in the right direction. We'll pick my next question, but I want to get your thoughts. Uh, uh, Mark Littlewood, I mean, even if you think that austerity is ending, presumably you don't want to see that happening. I mean, this is government, government spending more. You, well, you who's want... austerity yeah. would be my question. I mean, we have seen cuts in public sector spending, uh, very modest cuts, it's fair to say, and public, spe public spending is going to rise again under this Chancellor. That's what they mean by the end of austerity. Yeah. Rather than trimming back government spending by about half a percent per annum, I mean, that was the sum total of these cuts, uh, we're now going to begin to see uplifts in public sector spending. Well, that's all right if you're in the public sector or reliant on the public sector. I don't think austerity is ending for taxpayers. We have the highest tax burden for decades now as a proportion of national income. There's a few twiddles here and there about income tax thresholds. But if you've been feeling the pinch out of your wage packet, if you've been feeling the austerity of the government taking a large tranche of your income, uh, that ain't ending any time soon. So hold on, well, I can put this to both of you then. You come back to you on it, to Mark Little. But, I mean, you know, that change, that early move on the thresholds, it was promised by the Conservatives in their mm. manifesto at uh, the bottom and then uh, further up uh, the, the tax-paying tree, the Chancellor says 32 million people will benefit. That's, that's quite a substantial move. The disappointing thing, though, is that that's going to be disproportionately benefiting the richest 10 percent of households in this country which isn't what we actually need right now when you know as I outlined before we've got really uh, scary statistic in terms of an inequality crisis a housing crisis on our hands so to actually be making tax changes that will benefit the most wealthy people in the country doesn't feel like a budget um, to, that's really going to work and furthermore to, to your point you know we're going to continue with public sector well, pay cap uh, we're going to continue with austerity um, for pretty much everyone in this country so we're not actually well, there's a question of how you spend the government's money, but public spending is going up. You can argue whether more should go on pay and less on defence, or more on defence and less on education, or more on what about health paying and less off on the debt. Which I'm sure well, but the debt is think, going up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's good hold on a minute, me. right? Listen, this is great, but um, we've got Torsten Bell. He's hot-footed it into the studio after what tweeting there from the Resolution Foundation, I should say, yeah, tweeting, I suppose, so about all the messages in the budget, and, and join in here because the debate is um, whether austerity really is over. What's your take on it? Well, I think the budget is a bigger deal than most people are expecting. Um, I think it makes a significant easing of austerity, but not an ending of austerity. That's true both on departmental public spending, where we've seen a, a large amount of extra money put into the spending envelope, but most of that will go on the National Health Service, and so we'll still see, on average, cuts to unprotected departments in the next spending review. Smaller ones, but still some cuts, 3% over three years. It's also true on family budgets where the Chancellor announced a very welcome reversal of George Osborne's cuts to universal credit, putting in £1.7 billion. But the benefit freeze that's going ahead this April will still go ahead. Yeah, well, Fran, but we take that on. I mean, just that point is a step in the right direction, is it not? You know, particularly that large sum for the NHS. I think so, but the point is it's been it's been delivered under an umbrella of ending austerity and it's doing, you know, very much not that. And, you know, the Conservative government is incredibly out of touch. We saw last week at PMQ's uh, a Tory MP, Richard Graham, 
citing things that, have, that meant that his constituents weren't actually, um, hadn't been hard hit by austerity. And he said uh, a new homeless shelter was one good thing. I mean, this government is completely out of touch in terms of what's happening on the ground. And I just think it's completely dishonest to be putting out there that we're ending austerity okay. when actually life is going to get a lot well, harder well, Mark Little, I mean, the, people in this I mean, the Chancellor uh, even suggested, uh, well, if you read into the comments about Brexit and the idea that there could be another, what he called, fiscal event in the spring if it goes wrong, that austerity could be back on. Well, again, it depends what we mean by the austerity. Well, I'll tell you what the real problem numbers are underlining this, which Philip Hammond did today and George Osborne did prior to him. It's the disappointing growth statistics. So he rattles off a sort of at the start after he's got on a, through a few jokes that growth this year will be 1.6 and next year 1.3 or whatever. Our growth is actually very sluggish by Western standards. And if we are only going to see economic growth in Britain of about 1.5% a year for the next five years, all of these problems come into very stark relief because you don't have tax revenues going up. Uh, you have more people reliant on universal credit than would be the case if wages were growing. And it does seem to me the Chancellor sort of treats this as an external sort of God-given number, the growth st st uh, stats, rather than it being something that the government can help one way or the other. The question I would be asking is, why is America growing at three times the speed of the UK? Well, why is Johnson growing more quickly? The, 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 the Johnson doesn't seem to ask him. Oh, ask we know himself the answer. That question. Well, we know, but we know the answer. Well, what is the question? answer from your point of view? Well, there's a huge fiscal stimulus going on right now in the United States, semi-accidentally. Right. Or by tax cuts. With tax yeah. cuts, yeah. But, the, but whether it was tax cuts or spending cuts, we're seeing a lot of a fiscal stimulus into the economy. And we're wrestling with the complexity and the uncertainty of Brexit. And they're not. And those are the two reasons driving lower growth in the UK right now. But Mark is right that the long term challenging facing Britain is slow productivity growth, driving both slower earnings growth, which even on these forecasts, you know, we're in a situation today where the Chancellor is, for understandable reasons given recent politics, but is championing the fact that there is some real earnings growth in each of the next five years. Well, I bloody hope that, that, so. We really need to earn it. You're contradicting yourself, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Um, In the sense that, you know, you said, well, a step in the right direction, you know, this sign austerity might be starting to be over, but it sounds to me like you can't keep this up if those growth figures come in, even if they come in even a bit shallower. Who knows if Brexit, if there is no deal? So I think there is a fair critique, which is, I think is almost where the Labour Party is semi-getting to for different reasons, which is the Chancellor has significantly increased spending, used that to significantly reduce austerity in the coming years, but he's done that on the back of better public finance forecasts rather than on the back of tax Actual rises. Revenues. Yeah. Now, there is something in that. All I would say is a good chunk of why the OBR has revised up its public finance forecast is not some like, you know, forecast mumbo jumbo. It's because tax receipts have come in stronger than we expected over yeah. the last few months. That is real money and, uh, in the bank. And Fran Boyd, real money in the bank and real money out of the bank. I mean, the Chancellor spent it. You know, he didn't. Yeah. He didn't. I mean, he I, didn't use it to to pay off debt. He spent ninety-seven percent. Ninety-seven percent of the upgrade. The money spent. came in, and it went straight out. Straight out yeah, again. I mean, I mean, well, it doesn't really sound very conservative, Sky, does it? Sky News in, in July talking about the NHS. When you know, we already have had this news. So right. it's it, you know, Never most of a long time. yeah, exactly. But I think you know. The bigger point here is we're facing such a multitude of challenges. You know, we've got Brexit, we're likely to crash out with a no deal. We've got housing crisis and inequality crisis. Austerity continues. And this really needed to be like a bold, a bold vision for this country's, UK, the UK economy in the next few years. Well, how and much? It, I mean, and it was nothing of the sort. Obviously, really. we're leading to borrowing and, and taxing. How much do you think he should, should have gone for? Well, I mean, I think that when he says end austerity, he should actually mean it. You know, you should do things like stop universal credit when it's actually making people homeless right now. We should think about okay. how we need to invest in this country's infrastructure. You know, there were some there were some small welcome things, end to, end to PFI, you know, is good. But really, when you look at the challenges but, we're facing... But it in the face enough. of all the uncertainty, would borrowing such a huge sum, would, would that be entirely wise? Borrowing to invest is what we need to do. And also, you know, actually... In terms of where, where we're at, in terms of employment, we're under employment. We need to invest in this country. And, and by just saying, actually, we're going to tinker around the edges. But it's, the, it's not the Chancellor is squeezing out of the economy pretty much the maximum you can get in tax. We're going to squeeze out about 38% I mean, or so of national income. No, I mean, that is ridiculous. ridiculous. That, but that is definitely that, ridiculous. That, 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 I mean, lots of countries around the world. You can have an argument about the level of tax. It is definitely not the maximum. Like, well, lots well, of developed well, countries well, have significantly well, more. Well, some well, have well, a bit well, less. But, but you, if you look right, over the last two years, you can't get much more out of that. We've tried and we've never got it higher. We haven't tried. We've never got it higher. Left-wing governments, right-wing governments, minority governments, 
majority government. Oh, okay. This is the God, 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 God the determines. Four uh, decades. That's you're going to get the last one, fanboy. <laughs> All right, so great. You think, it, you think it could go higher I than mean, what, I the 38%? I mean, I think we've just got to have a conversation about what we want this country to be in the next 10 years. And we don't want it to be a high debt and unequal place, which is where it's going. I mean, the, you know, I think that the economics paradigm is changing and we could be doing interesting things. You know, I represent positive money. We've actually spent 475 billion that the Bank of England has created on keeping asset price inflation high and pumping financial right. markets. There's no reason that couldn't be going into okay. these things. Well, we need to be a bit more creative Good and imaginative. Fran Boyd, thank Thanks. you very much indeed, Mark Littlewood. And Torsten Bell, thank you very much.